Hey guys. Well, got a few things to cover today. Um, as you very well know, I have built quite a few airplanes this winter, which is not, uh, not normal of me to do, but, uh, also because they're not very sophisticated models, pretty simple stuff. So I figured we would, uh, quickly go over, um, two of the planes that are completely finished now, and then, oh, I've been working on other stuff. We'll come back to that. So anyway, the Prime Stick was originally the main project that was my focus for this winter. Um, and it turned out, and I ended up finishing it uh, before Thanksgiving. Well, for the most part finishing it. But now it is completely ready to go. Um, oh, excuse me. So the engine that I chose to use in this is the RCGF Stinger 40 Twin. See, they got the little, probably hard to see, a little scorpion engraved in there. Kind of cool. Um, very impressed with the engine. I have not run it yet, but uh, the overall construction, the way everything looks on the inside, um, I don't anticipate any issues. Um, Dave Brown, uh, Ultimate Cut Spinner, was able to find one on eBay. And running a Mezlik, was this a 20? Yeah, 20 by 8 carbon prop can't get any better um i knew i was going to run into some issues with getting enough weight up in the nose because as you can see there's really not much of a nose to the airplane <clears throat> and it was designed uh with the intent to use like a a Zenoa, like a g38 or a quadra 35 something along those lines so very heavy engines which is why it was built like this um so what I ended up doing is if you go back a few videos ago, you'll be able to see exactly how the firewall is built. The firewall actually sits back here, so there's, there's like a gap um, where the siding goes in, where the tops and the sides go in and meet the firewall. So I took advantage of that gap and actually lined it completely with these uh, lead, not lead, uh, steel uh, weights. The, uh, the stick-on kind. So there's actually two layers of those weights in there. Then once they're in there, um, I had the fuselage sitting up on its tail, and I filled the whole thing with, uh, with epoxy resin just to kind of lock everything in and give it a nice gloss. And I put, it's, there's over a pound in there, so that should do it. I think it still might be a little tail heavy. No, I'm not going to balance it. I'm not, I, that's just not my thing. I'm going to fly it, see how I like it, and we should be good to go. And I did away with the carbon landing gear. I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And, yeah, they had to go. I, I hate carbon fiber as far as wing tubes and landing gear. Those are two things, in my opinion, where carbon does not belong. But anyways... Besides having the aluminum gear be a lot stronger than the carbon, it's also heavier, which gave me a little bit more weight up front. And that's also why I went with the aluminum uh, ultimate cut spinner and the carbon prop. So I'm getting more weight up in the front. And I used some uh, heavy duty um, uh, aluminum standoffs on top of the one inch uh, blocks that I put on the firewall. So that gives the engine a little bit further forward and a little bit more weight. Figured that couldn't help. Take a little peek, see underneath. Nice clean setup, looks really good. Can't wait to get it going. Cannot wait. Really cool airplane. So, since the last video, the Satabria hasn't changed much other than it's now finished. Um... I think the last video, I didn't have the wheel pants done. The cowl was painted, but I didn't have the green on the side or the end numbers. So once I got the end numbers from my good buddy Jim Robinson, I was able to put the uh, the green stripes and get the green painted on the cowl. Uh, we're going to talk about that cowl here in a minute. Not happy. Um, but I kind of cheat, and I got my, my grandfather's name on there, Les Gideon. 
I kind of cheat when I do a stripe like this. Typically, you would cut two green stripes and lay them on there since the fuselage is already white. I don't do that. Like I said, I cheat. I do a solid green stripe all the way, and then I run a white pinstripe right down the middle. So, yeah, it still looks good. Kind of cheating to do it that way, but I think it's all right. And last time we looked at it, I had the wing on, so we really couldn't see the inside. This allows you to see the setup. Uh, there's those Fataba U400s I was telling you about. Really great servo. Real good stuff. And if somebody notices, you'll see how I ran the push rods up through here. I got clevises on the control surfaces, but up here, um, it's a 90 degree bend coming up through the servo arm and then using a wheel collar to lock it on. This was actually something that had to be done back in the pylon racing days, uh, like Quickie 500 and stuff like that, Formula 1s, because you couldn't have any snap-on type connectors. It had to be a Z-bend or something that could actually lock like that. So I've been using that method quite a bit, and it works well. <clears throat> and we got the uh, FreeSky Tandem R10 receiver in there. Uh, so we got, we got an antenna up here going... Uh, up and down we got another antenna right here going back and forth and we really can't see it I doubt we'll be able to see it in there yeah, you can kind of see it. you can see the, the the 900 megahertz antenna tucked away up there so that's all that's all good to go now at quick glance you'll notice that the green on the cowl is an absolutely perfect match oh man and it's a Tamiya paint and it's just metallic green, you know, nothing special. So I painted the green, uh, brought the cowl home, waited overnight, and then I did the same, I used the same pinstripe material to do the cowl, and it turned out well. And then two days later, two days later, started getting a weird reaction with the paint. If the camera will focus. Doubt it will. Come on now. There we go. So as you can see, it started to lift and bubble, and oh, <clears throat> that is so disheartening. Because for the most part, it turned out really well. I mean, that is rock hard, smooth paint, and it did the same on the other side. Oh, what a bummer. I'm okay with it for now. I'll probably redo it eventually, but... Damn, are you are you serious? Unbelievable. Um, yeah, wheel pants are all painted up, mounted. Um, nothing is cleared. I'm going to try to see how well this paint holds up with glow fuel. It should be all right, uh, especially since you can see where I'm running the exhaust. It's mainly going to be coming down here, so the cowl really isn't. Yeah, you know, got my little plug there for getting the fuel in and out of it. Um... None of this should really be getting hit with very much fuel anyway. One more quick shot here. Everything just turned out so nice. Very happy. But, yeah. So that is good to go. 100% complete. Now, Project 5 and 6. What I have here is my latest uh, Scimitar project which is the Scimitar Tradition, or it's, the, it's called the Slow Motion Tradition. The Slow Motion was a very popular design by Bill Evans uh, kind of early on in the Scimitar series. And many years later, he decided to lengthen the fuselage to a, so now it looks kind of like a, more of a traditional type airplane, and which is why it's called the Tradition. So it's the standard uh, slow motion 15 wing with a stretch fuselage. And in fact, I bought a kit to do the, I bought the entire kit from Eureka Aircraft for the slow motion, even though I wasn't gonna use the fuselage. But that'll kind of give you an idea of the differences and that it has a bigger uh, fin and a functional rudder. 
So that's kind of cool. And behind me, we're watching uh, some old Bill Evans videos. That looks like a scimitar zippity doo dah flying up uh, 10,000 feet elevation somewhere out in California. Pretty cool stuff. Um, the foam wings are almost finished. All I gotta do now is put the cap strips on there. I like foam wings because they're really, really easy to do. The downside is, is they take longer to, to do because when you lay down your skins, you have to put them back in the, uh, in the cores and put about three and a half million pounds of weight on them until the glue dries. And you got to repeat the process for both sides, different pieces of sheeting. It's easier to do if the wing is completely sheeted in one piece of balsa. Like you glue your skins together, cut them into shape, trowel on your glue, set them, put them in the cores, and you're good to go. But this one's a little bit different because it simulates a build-up wing when it's done. But turned out really nice. And as you can see, I've been making a little bit of a mess. And I don't know how many times I've said this, but I'm going to say it again. If you do not have a Master Air Screw Razor Planer, you need to get one. Because <clears throat> like the trailing edge stock, the two pieces for the leading edge, you do the majority of your shaping with the razor planer and you get these long curly strips of wood instead of a pile of sawdust and, you know, getting carpal tunnel and throwing your shoulder out. You know, cute little canopy. We're going to get to this guy here in just a little bit. Let's be patient. And also the cool thing about this, uh, the scimitar tradition is it's got these little, like, cheeks, like cowl cheeks that glue onto the side and they just look freaking awesome. This is my favorite design of the scimitar. Really cool looking airplane. And uh, nearing completion. Should be, I either have an ASP-52 or a Magnum-52 four-stroke that's going to be in it. They're the same engine, but uh, if for some reason one doesn't run, I'll use the other. So, because the foam wing takes time, you know, in between steps, I, I built the fuselage. A few weeks ago so that's been sitting here ready to go I needed something else to do while I was you know in the process of doing my wings so I decided to build yet another classic airplane uh, thanks to my buddies at MBMRC um, they got a YouTube channel which is the, that is the name MBMRC um, they specialize in building these classic airplanes and when they did a review video on this airplane, it just it clicked somewhere in the back of my mind going, man, that looks familiar. I know I've seen those before, but it just I had totally forgotten about it and couldn't even remember where I remember seeing it. But anyways, we'll get back to that. This is a Stu Richmond design corkscrew. Very simple airplane to build, very basic, no actual canopy, you know, simulated canopy. Um, very, very quick, simple build, eighth inch wire landing gear that you build according to the template on the plans. Um, old OS 25 FSR fits right in the nose. The main modification that I've made to this airplane, besides some of the internal, uh, reinforcing with doublers, I went away from the light ply and used mostly balsa just to keep the weight down. But... It's not supposed to have a hatch. Um, the engine mounts on rails, as you can see, and those rails are supposed to run all the way through to the number one bulkhead. And then the fuel tank actually is supposed to be partially exposed. I just don't like that. Not on a plane like this. So I only have the rails out here for the engine. And then in here, um, I'm, I got a Sullivan uh, six ounce tank coming that will fit underneath this hatch. So I think that just looks a lot better. One of the unique things about this airplane is it's a flat bottom wing. And it's claim to fame back in the day, like 1983, is the fact that it is a flat bottom wing, but it doesn't fly like it. 
Um, according to the early articles that Stu Richmond uh, did in the publications many years ago, said this thing will fly inverted just as well as right side up. It's aerobatic as all hell. The only thing that you really, he said, you really couldn't do very well because of the flat bottom airfoil was a tight outside loop. So that was kind of the, you know, try it at your own risk. It would do, it'll do an outside loop. You just got to give yourself some room. Boy, somebody's firing up a tune pipe. Hell yes. And another uh, zippity do scimitar zippity doo dah. He is a buddy pilot. Just took off. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, I've been kind of working on that, getting ready to build the wing, so that should be cool. Now, where I remember this airplane from, and this combination actually has quite a bit of uh, interesting uh, history with me and my family personally. Uh, many years ago, my earliest childhood memories being out at the flying field, there was a a member of the club named Ron Quick, and he flew scimitars. He flew a lot of planes, but he always had scimitars, and that was just the coolest thing. I, I'll never forget those those airplanes, seeing them back then, and uh, that's the main reason I've had an interest in them, you know, nowadays. But anyways, in 1993-ish, 92 or 93, Ron Quick also had one of these. That's why I remembered this airplane when I saw uh, Matthew Colm build and fly his on MBMRC. That's where I remember it from. That's why it was familiar, because Ron Quick had one. So now I got two airplanes that were inspired by, you know, Ron Quick, a family friend years ago. And also a cool thing about Ron is when I was pretty little, uh, my mom and dad bought the house that I pretty much grew up in from Ron Quick and his wife. So what a wicked history. You know, just with these two particular airplanes, um, kind of inspired by one guy, which is kind of cool. Um, unfortunately, he passed away relatively early, um, back in, I think, 2001, um, I believe from a bee sting. Crazy, crazy how things like that work out. But anyway, so that's uh, that's where we're at. Just figure I'd give a, give a little update video here on what I've been up to. Um, just keep plugging away. So this is now project five and six for this winter. And yeah, they're nothing, you know, too fancy or complicated. But with the, you know, inflation, the price of everything being out of control, especially the price of balsa wood, uh, I don't see much of a future uh, for me building giant scale airplanes. I mean, building those two was that was expensive enough. Where these one, these here are still relatively inexpensive to build. Um, however, I recently received a set of plans from Germany. I think I mentioned these plans a while back, and they are for an airplane that. Uh, Kind of the same, actually there's no resemblance to the Globe Swift, but the same type of situation. It's a plane you look at and go, wow, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen one of those. Kind of, kind of that situation. But it's a classic airplane, it is scale, and it was also popular back in the 70s and 80s in the Tournament of Champions. That might give it away. It's not necessarily an aerobatic airplane. It, it is, but you know, it's not like an extra or an ultimate or something like that. It's got retracts. I haven't decided if I'm going to build it yet because the plans that I have are for um, a 54-inch model, and I'm going to enlarge the plans 100%, so that way I get a 108-inch wing. But I still have to study the plans, figure out if I even want to do it, and... Uh, once I make that decision, then I'll I'll do a video and let everybody know what it is. I think a whopping two people know what the project is. So that is where we're at. Oh, wait a minute. And I picked up on a trade an old Goldberg Tiger II. 
Um, it came with a Magnum 53 four or a Magnum 52 four stroke, which I, I took out. I've flown this and it flies fantastic. Of course, because it's a Goldberg. I mean, I still have a Tiger 60 hanging up there in the Raptors. But I knew a 52 four stroke wasn't going to fly this thing. So I put an old uh, OS 46 FXI in there. And it, it just flies fantastic. What a great airplane. I love stuff like this. You know, they're small, they're cheap, they don't take up much space. You stick them up in the ceiling and get them down whenever you feel like giving it a fly. So, that is where we're at. I don't think I have anything else to discuss. But uh, we're just getting ready to creep into February. So spring is right around the corner. And hopefully all circumstances work out and I'll be able to get some flying in this year. But never know. Crazy world we live in. All right, everybody. Till the next time. Later.